is a pleasure to have you here today. Today we're going to get started on our presentation, Essential Documentation and Clinical Trials at Clinical Research Sites. So today's training is going to focus on the essential documents that are collected at the research site. So a little bit about myself before we get started. My name is Marla Helly. I have been in the clinical research industry now for a little over 24 years. I started out as a research nurse. Sometimes people also hear the term study coordinator, similar at an academic center. And then I continued to work as a research nurse for a number of years and then decided to continue the work that I was doing and worked for both a CRO and as a CRA and then also worked as a clinical project manager for both a sponsor, two sponsor companies, I should say, and a clinical research organization. I have certifications through ACRP as a certified clinical research associate, as well as certification through PMI as a project management professional. And I really enjoy training other colleagues that are in clinical research and also, too, learning from my colleagues that are in clinical research. So in today's session, we will be sharing information between one another, and I look forward to it. We will go over our learning objectives for today's session. So we are going to define clinical research essential documentation and also determine the essential subject and non-subject specific documentation that's required for a clinical trial as well as discussing essential documents for both investigational drug versus device versus combination products, and also how to prepare for a regulatory inspection, looking at how we can proactively and reactive use essential documents to help us in an inspection by a regulatory authority. So essential documents, what are they? Well, I like to look at what ICH E6 defines as essential documents. And I took the definition directly from the ICH document itself, which I've also provided you a copy of this document as well for your reference. That particular document, as far as what you have received, is going to be handout number uh, 12, which here is an image of what it looks like, and I do want to point out that ICH did make an addendum to this particular document for the E6R2, and that was made in November of last year, November 9th, 2016, and there are some addendums that do address essential documents as far as how we are going to retain those documents and in what format. And I have integrated that information into today's session and I will be pointing that out to you. So let's go back to the slide to see the definition of essential documents as defined by ICH. Those are documents which individually and collectively permit evaluation of the conduct of a trial and the quality of the data produced. These documents serve to demonstrate the compliance of the investigator, sponsor, and monitor with standards of GCP, or good clinical practice, with all applicable regulatory requirements. So essential documents serve to demonstrate compliance of the investigator, the sponsor, and monitor with the standards of GCP. I also like to think of essential documents as telling the story of what occurred at that investigative site. So, for example, if we look at the clinical trial that you are working on, if I came as a consultant to come in and do an audit or an inspection of that investigational site, I should be able to by just looking at the essential documents, be able to tell you what actually is occurring at this site. For example, telling you the name of the protocol, the investigator, those individuals that the investigator has delegated to do work on the trial, as well as his correspondence with the sponsor, 
the IRB, any serious adverse events, um, as well as other communications that have occurred that we'll be talking about during today's session. 